I've had a Steam Deck for about a month now, and I thought I'd make a little video talking about my experiences with it. For a little background, I'm a console gamer almost exclusively. I do have a pretty high-end gaming PC, but PC gaming just never really appealed to me. This is why I was drawn to Valve's Steam Deck, a handheld Linux device that plays PC games in a console environment. A lot of people compared it to the Switch, and rightfully so, but the handheld thing is really their only similarity. I'll do some more comparisons later on, so you'll see what I mean. First of all, the design. I think the design is awesome. I have pretty big hands, so having a nice beefy form factor is really nice. The buttons and thumbsticks feel great, but their placement's a little weird in my opinion. This is to make room for the dual trackpads, which Valve used before on their now discontinued Steam controller. I didn't think I'd like the trackpads very much, but I got used to them pretty quick, and I like the tactile feel of them. Like I said, the thumbsticks, buttons, and d-pad are all kind of crammed upwards to accommodate the trackpads, and while it takes a little getting used to, I didn't find it that bad for most games. The triggers and bumpers feel about how you'd expect them to. I did experience a little stickiness on the left bumper, but that cleared itself up pretty quickly. There's also two sets of back buttons, which I rarely use, but come in handy for stuff like emulation hotkeys when other buttons are being used for actual gameplay. The 7 inch touchscreen works about as well as any touchscreen on a phone or tablet and outputs at 1280p. There's also a gyroscope, which I didn't really find useful, but I suppose later down the line, VR games could be developed to be playable with gyro support or a handheld VR attachment could be used, similar to Nintendo's Labo VR kit for the Switch. Now, I don't know much about the technical aspects of these kinds of things, so I'll just talk about my experiences with how it runs. The model I have is the base model, which has an internal storage of 64GB, which, as any PC gamer will tell you, is not enough. Luckily, the Steam Deck supports expandable storage through microSD cards. Even owners of the higher storage models recommend you pick up a decent sized SD card. You'll be surprised how fast the storage fills up with just a couple games. Keep in mind, not all SD cards are the same. I learned that the hard way. There's lots of guides online for which one to pick up, but I recommend a SanDisk Extreme card. These are built for running applications, whereas the standard SD cards are built for storing images or documents. The only input on the Steam Deck is a USB-C input, which is used for charging, but you can also plug any USB-C device into it, including USB Hub, which allows you to use a controller, mouse, keyboard, or any USB device if that's the kind of person you are. Valve actually makes a docking station very similar to the Switch, which includes an HDMI and DisplayPort output. The deck is capable of outputting up to 8K resolution to another monitor through this, but as someone who doesn't own an 8K monitor, I wasn't able to test it. I should also mention I don't have the official Valve Produce dock, I instead kind of made one myself using a cheap dock I found on Amazon, but the results should be about the same. I didn't experience any input lag or frame drops like I was expecting, so despite being a handheld, you could totally use this to play PC games on your TV, if you're, you know, weird. Speaking of which, how do games run on this thing? First of all, not every game will run on the deck. Valve actually has a list of indicators on Steam games now to specify if they're compatible. There's four indicators. Verified, meaning it'll run perfectly with no issue. Playable, meaning it will work, but there's a few minor issues that make it less than perfect. Untested, which is exactly what it sounds like, nobody knows how well these games run, and incompatible, which again, is exactly how it sounds. If you're worried about games that say playable instead of verified, this mostly comes down to entering text with the on-screen keyboard, small text, since the games were built with bigger screens in mind, or minor glitches with the sound or graphics. Sometimes the games bring up a launcher screen, which you'll need to use a touchscreen or trackpad to navigate to. I'll give a couple examples of the games I've tried. Cyberpunk 2077 ran fine, I did notice a few frame drops here and there, but overall it ran much better than expected. It did drain my battery pretty quick though. It went from fully charged to 33% after about an hour of playing. Soul Calibur 6, in terms of AAA games, is probably the game I had the least amount of problems with. Compared to PC or console, the load times are a lot slower, but if you don't mind being a little more patient than usual, you're not going to have a problem. Multiverses ran okay, but I did notice some pretty serious bugs. And I'm not talking about the bunny. Fucking cut that out, Jesus Christ. But this wasn't a Steam Deck problem, since I saw the bugs being reported on by PC users in general. It's a free-to-play game, there's gonna be a little fuckery here and there. Bloom's Tower Defense 6 had a lot of graphical issues, and was just overall unpleasant to play on the console. Just use a phone for this one, please. Rivals of Aether, as expected, ran just fine. Being a 2D game, I didn't expect many problems, and I didn't get any. Browsing the workshop was a little rough at times, though. Now, those are all Steam games, but that's not the only way to play games on the deck. You can also install other launchers like Blizzard's Battle.net to play games like Overwatch, or the Epic Games Store to play games like Fortnite, or Xbox Game Pass to play... every game ever made, I guess. I haven't had any experience with this just yet, but what I have had experience with is emulating on the deck. 
Disclaimer, don't pirate games, only download ROMs for games you own, yada yada, legal legal. Anyway, you can emulate basically everything on the Steam Deck, with the exception of more modern games. As a personal policy, I don't like to emulate games from the last two generations, but you can emulate Wii U, Xbox 360, PSP, Arcade, DOS, 3DS, Dreamcast, and it all runs great. For the most part. I used Emudeck, which is a program that installs all the necessary emulators and plugins automatically, so this may be different if you choose to use something else, but here's my experience with emulating games. Wii and GameCube games ran pretty good, but there are a few issues with controller configuration and also minor graphical glitches. But fiddling around in the settings made games like Smash Bros Brawl, Strong Bat's Cool Game for Attractive People, and Donkey Konga feel great on the deck. Oh yeah, Donkey Kong 2 was the first GameCube game I ran on this thing. Most people emulate Melee or Double Dash or Mario Sunshine. Nah, I gotta have the game where Donkey Kong plays the bongos to send the pain below. PS2 games took a little more technical knowledge to run. I'm more experienced with Nintendo emulation, so I had no idea what a BIOS was or how to install it, but once I did, I was able to run games like Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, GTA San Andreas, Nightmare Before Christmas Oogie's Revenge, and Aqua Teen Hunger Force Zombie Ninja Pro-Am with very little problems. The only major issue was trying to remember the PlayStation button layout. Older consoles like N64, DS, and GBA ran about as well as you'd expect them to, and unfortunately I wasn't able to figure out Xbox emulation just yet. The only problem with DS and 3DS games I ran into was the whole dual screen thing, but apparently there's a way to use a second monitor as the main screen while the deck acts as the bottom screen, so that's fucking cool. Like I said before, the Steam Deck's most often brought up topic is how it competes next to the Nintendo Switch, and personally, I think both have their ups and downs. The Steam Deck isn't the Switch killer, and I doubt Nintendo will actively try to compete with Valve on this one. Yes, the two are similar, but they cater to completely different markets. You're not going to buy a Steam Deck for little Jimmy for his birthday. You're going to get him the thing that plays Pokemon and doesn't have access to hentai games. Oh no! So overall, the Steam Deck and Switch both have their strengths and weaknesses, but I wouldn't call them competitors. Although Valve did show a popular Switch emulator in their recent trailer for the Steam Deck, so that's interesting. So now that I've talked about my experiences with the Steam Deck, here's my final thoughts. Should you get a Steam Deck? Well, if you like PC games but you don't like playing them on PC, yes, that's what I bought it for. If you're a console gamer who can't afford a higher end PC but you still want to play PC games, then maybe. The Steam Deck's base model will run you about $500, so on top of a decent sized memory card, it's not much cheaper than a proper PC. If you just want to emulate games, then I'd say yes and no. Sure, the deck can emulate pretty much everything. But that's a lot of money to throw at something you're just going to play old games on. If you're looking to use it as an actual PC, then no. Just buy a laptop. The deck can do a lot, but it can't do everything. It's a powerful handheld gaming PC, and if that sounds cool to you, then chances are you should get one. Special thanks to my amazing patrons, Pikiyuma, Oni Shark Media, Beans, Miss Jukebox 8, Dreaded Cipher, Michael P, Mefarious90, Luna Runa21, Alpha Red, Mr. Dude, Akuma Ryu, P Chi, Lucky Fields, Tomato Ghost, Shiner, Cyborg Charlotte, Happier Ender, Scorpion Gaming, Swadloon, Donataro, Relevant, Armando, Thomas Ekman, Andre Sadler, Necroshix, and Isaac Batista. What's your opinion on the Steam Deck if you have one? Or if you don't have one, did my video make you want to get one? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this kind of video, I've done more of them over on my main channel, Taco Draws. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.